This is Good Morning San Diego. Good morning, San Diego. I'm Lauren Finney. I'm Paul Rudy. Today is Wednesday, April 12th. The clock will soon strike 701. Another hour together, partner. <laughs> You have an exciting conversation. I'm looking forward to. I actually to have a pair. Uh, Michael Brunker, who I've become friends with, uh, uh, just, he just became a, such a help to uh, what we're trying to do with the Prep Picks Report. He took me under his wing and provided a lot of guidance. Well, he also is an author of sorts. Everybody knows his work with the Jackie Robinson YMCA, but now he wrote an op-ed piece for the UT, and it's about the men's basketball team and their ma magical run. We're going to get Michael's uh, take on. I'd be interested in how that worked, if, if they came to him or if he just wrote an article and submitted it. We'll see how it all... It was, um, it was a very well-written, lovely well, piece, I, would, I thought. Having so, gotten to know him a little bit, I would expect nothing less than that. But Yeah, I don't a, know him that well. He's I, very passionate about the sport yeah. of basketball. He's close friends with Dick Vitale. Uh, for those who don't know, he was an assistant basketball coach under Smokey Gaines here. And uh, he's everything he touches turns to gold, so... He's well, anyone guys. that's that close with Dick Vitale, then I, you know, because that man is probably one of the kindest, most genuine souls. I just have nothing but absolute respect for him, so. And you could be talking about Michael as well. Either, yeah. So, yeah same way. He's, he's great, so I'm, I'm, I would love to know how that panned out. We're okay. singing the praises of the SDSU men's basketball team still. What a former Aztec assistant coach is saying about that historic run and why he put pen to paper about it as Good Morning San Diego returns. Uh, for several weeks, and it came together, the entire city came together in the excitement of March Madness as the Aztecs embarked on that historic run, one that we will never forget, and the journey gave reflection to our next guest, who was prompted to write an editorial about it. Joining me now is former SDSU assistant men's basketball coach Michael Brunder. Michael. Good morning. It's always fun to talk to you. Yes, it is. And uh, I, I'm curious, well, you have a relationship with the UT already, right? Is that, is that I mean, they, they know all about you. They do, and, and a lot of that is because of you and KUSI wow. and the invitations to come here and speak about, especially this great run from San Diego State. But I am on their community advisory board, and during the, our season of service, there they always ask us to put pen to paper and talk about topics, and um, and some do and some don't, but I do, and and I, I've had the opportunity to do that a number of times. So you, when did you write this last week? I wrote it last week. Yeah. So you sat down at your computer and started hammering away. The restrictions were <laughs> seven hundred words. <laughs> Now, is that, I assume, 700, I remember back in the day when you'd write the same sentence eight times and you get your, get your essay approved at school. Right. 700 words, though, is not a lot, is it? It's not a lot, especially when you're trying to just, you know, capture, capture everything that's happened during this magical season for San Diego State. So, Well, if you, for those who have seen it, what would you say the theme is? Well, the theme for me is um, we should probably be thankful for what we have, you know, because uh, the, the biggest thing I pointed out it was that we were in rare air. When you look at it, the numbers that really stood out for me, there's only been 14 out of 363 universities around the country that have won the NCAA championship more than one time. Then there's another uh, of those 14, then there's 17 uh, you know, who have done it just once. 23 have done it just once. And then there's another 17 like San Diego State who've been to the championship game, finished runner-up, and never been back. You see, and so it's it's an, and when you look at the names of the schools that have gone through that experience, it's some powerful programs. But just to get where we were is something I hope everybody values and appreciates. I would say one of the other themes is is the fact that you're optimistic that this is just the start and not the end. I am because I think once again I talked about how San Diego State is building a reputation, not resting on one. So UCLA, for example, has been to, won 11 national championships. The last one was in 1995. Their last appearance in the, final, in the championship game was in 2006, the great UCLA. So right. when we put it all in perspective right now, you just don't get there overnight, which makes it even more remarkable when you look at UConn has been to now five national championship games, and they're 5-0. and 
that, that, I mean, really, hats off. It, hats off. I right. mean, they're the they're the contemporary. When I was growing up, the the pinnacle of high school or excuse me, collegiate basketball was UCLA. Sure. You know, as a, cause that's all we heard about. And now I think UConn is the contemporary version of the Bruins. They're doing it, yeah. and, they're, and they're doing it with a number of reasons why. But but I think the game has changed too. I mean, when you look at the transfer portal right now, you look at the NIL things that are out there right now. You look at San Diego State in terms of just trying to bring back the players that they have returning. And then I read in the paper yesterday where you've got four that are looking to test the draft markets for the NBA, and you've got one maybe thinking of entering the portal. That's something that just didn't happen back when I was going. Yeah, well, those are first-world problems, though, are they not? I mean, that, those are problems that come with success. They do, and, and I think you bring up a good point, because I don't want people thinking that this NIL thing is new. I mean, it might be legal now. Yeah, it might be legal. Yeah, speak to that a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I remember we uh, signed Michael Cage out of West Memphis, Arkansas, you know, and, and, and we got him out here, and he played, had a great four-year career here, went on to play in the NBA for 15 years. But do you think, as a freshman, when he led the nation to rebounding, that Memphis State wasn't trying to get him to come back home? Yes. I mean, Burke Rosewood speaks to that. <laughs> Burt was part of the, well, he was on the receiving end of a lot of these yes, offers. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, but, and he says that the, well, this is just now we're being honest about yeah. what's going on, which makes what happened here at San Diego City even more special that you got these, and I'm sure the pandemic played a significant role in that, but you have this group of kids that stayed together and stayed four or five, even in some cases a sixth year. That, that that's what might not ever happen again. And, and so what happens though is when you elevate that model, you know, every program in the country is going to look at that. They're going to study that. They're going to say we can do the same thing. And so when you look at a Florida Atlantic, when you look at a Creighton, you look at the teams that advanced as far as they did, and the Blue Buds weren't there in the right. end. I mean, they, they, the number one seeds were gone. Right. You know, and those that arguably might have been the best teams money can buy. When you look at Miami, you know, there's been articles that would come out about their center with had a one. Million dollar contract. They had the guard that transferred from Kansas State, who had eight hundred thousand dollars, four hundred over over two years. You know, what, what if Kansas State had that player? As far as they went, it might have been a different story for them. Well, you bring up the, uh, the we have the city, San Diego. Everyone wants to play live in San Diego. We have the arena, we have the coach, so we have elements in place. It's the NIL money that will be the, the I think, and, and the Mesa Foundation is doing what it can, but to get to that stratosphere. Yeah. Yeah. That's going to be the issue, is it not? It, and not only to get to that level, but to keep what we have. You right. know? So right now, let, let's say if a player like Keyshawn Johnson does go into the portal and he tests the waters and, and the, he can get a contract that he probably could at other places that we just that can't, can't afford. No, that would be the, what, what the entire team is getting here in San Diego State, okay. maybe more. So now why are you coming here? You know, why would you stay in these programs? And, and that's a tough thing on a coaching staff. It used to be the season's over, now you got the off season, you prepare, you recruit. Right. But right now you're working hard to retain what you have. Yeah. And that's not always easy. Right. Well, you got to find that group of kids that share that common. Michael, we got for run, but uh, congratulations on the article. I'm sure there'll be more to come. And let me add one thing, too. What we have to get is we got to get somebody big inside. You see, so right now, when you look at the impact of a seven foot center that had on us as we went through the tournament right now, higher education, 6'11, 7 feet, 7'1, seven, 7'2. Seven, that's who I'll be looking at right now. A whole different version of higher education. Oh, yeah. All right, Michael, thank you so much. It's going to be a